We have an essay here. Our question is about capital budgeting. The company is Encino Company, and since this is capital budgeting, this makes it a part two section E question that we have. And as always, we'll go ahead and start right with the information. Encino Company, a diversified manufacturer, is considering three potential projects. To evaluate capital projects, the finance department uses the net present value method and the payback period method. The company has a hurdle rate of 13%. Capital projects are acceptable under the payback period if the initial investment is recouped in three years. For the upcoming fiscal year, the board of directors has approved a capital projects budget of up to $8 million. And data on the various projects under consideration are shown below. And we have a table here. We've got three projects. We have three different amounts of outlay. Four million and something for each of them. Now, we've got eight million dollars. We just were told that in the question. They've approved eight million dollars. Well, we can only do one of these projects right now because any two of them added together is going to be more than eight million dollars. And so we can only do one of them. We're given all of the different in individual years cash flows, and then they're nice enough. We don't have to calculate it. They tell us what the net present value is and they tell us what the payback period is for each of these pro each of these potential projects and you know we can kind of look at these right now and say project one has a negative net present value and the payback period is exactly three years and so because we have a negative net present value we're not going to be investing in project one and the payback period is three didn't say specifically if it had to be less than three or exactly three, but because we have a negative net present value, that payback plan or the payback period really isn't going to come into it. So it looks like we're going to have to make a decision here about project two or project three. So that's the information. We've got a number of requirements. First, identify and explain two advantages and two disadvantages of using the payback period method and the net present value method respectively. Okay, so that's a text one, just two advantages, two disadvantages. Second, which projects should Encino select based on the payback period method? Explain your answer. Third, which project should Encino select based on the net present value method? Explain your answer. And then three more requirements. Fourth, assume the board of directors revises the capital budget upward to $10 million. Which project or projects should the company select based on the payback period method? And which project should the company select based on the net present value method. So this addresses the fact that I said, well, if they've got $8 million, they can only invest in one. Now that they have $10 million, they could conceivably invest in two if there are two projects that would be worth it. Fifth, define sensitivity analysis and explain how management could use sensitivity analysis in the capital budgeting process. And finally, discuss two qualitative factors that Encino should consider when making capital budgeting decisions. So what we have here is really no math. We don't have to do the math. We have to use the numbers to answer the question, but we don't have to actually calculate the numbers. So let's go ahead and start first with the, with the first requirement. Identify and explain two advantages and two disadvantages of using the payback period method and the net present value method respectively. And so we've got a couple of tables here. We've got advantages of the payback period. Well, it's simple to use as it does not involve accrual accounting conventions. It quickly identifies projects which will recoup the company's investment quickly and it's useful in cases of uncertainty. Now there's three advantages there. They only wanted two but you know, going a little safe here providing more disadvantages of the payback period. It does not consider the time value of money. It does not consider the cash flows after the payback period. It doesn't consider the return on investment and it ignores profitability and risk. Okay? And so there's a number of things there that it's not taking into account. And we only needed two of those, but we could combine these if we wanted to. So those are the advantages and disadvantages of the payback period. Net present value, well, the advantage is it does consider the time value of money. It does consider the impact of all of the cash flows associated with the project, including the ones after the payback period has been reached. And net present value, value tells whether a project will create value for the company or investors and by how much in terms of dollars. That's kind of the key advantage to that. It actually gives us a dollar amount. The disadvantages, it does not fully account for opportunity costs. 
Net present value is very sensitive to the discount rate, which is subject to estimation, and it is not useful for comparing two projects of different sizes. Okay, so again, we only needed two. We're kind of over answered here in the suggested answer, but we need a just nice little table. The advantages of payback, disadvantages, the advantages of net present value, and the disadvantages of net present value. So we get to the second requirement, which project should Encino select based on the payback period method? Explain your answer. And again, just to look at all of the, the numbers again here. Well, we know that project one is kind of possible. Its payback period is three years, and so we kind of have that. But we have two other projects, projects two and project three, that have lower than three payback periods. And so if we have an $8 million budget, the lowest payback period, the fastest payback period, is project two. And so with a budget of $8 million, the company should select project two because it has the fastest payback period and is below the three-year maximum identified by management. This is important because it's possible that the shortest payback period was 3.7 years in which case none of them should be accepted, even the one that's the fastest, because even though it's the fastest, if it's 3.7 years, it's still too, too slow. And then it says here, just to complete the answer, project three could not be accepted due to capital budget limitations, even though the payback period is below the three years stipulated by management. So if we've got $8 million, the lowest payback period, the fastest payback period, is how we're going to make that decision. Now the next requirement, requirement number three, asks us to do the same thing based on net present value. Again, we've got our three projects here. We already have eliminated project one. We identified that very early as not having a positive net present value. And so when we look at what net present value is the highest, well, project two has a significantly higher net present value than project three, and so our answer, with a budget of $8 million, the company should select project two under the net present value method because its net present value is positive and higher than project three. Okay, again, nothing terribly detailed there, but just recognizing whether we're doing payback period or the net present value and choosing the best. Now, in our fourth requirement, the board of directors revises the capital budget upward to $10 million. So which project should we invest in based on the payback period? and which project or projects should we invest in based on the net present value method? Well, we've really already kind of answered this question because we know that projects two and three are both acceptable under the payback method and the net present value method. And we know, we didn't actually do the math, but we can do it, that if we add up the investment for project two and project three, it is less than $10 million and so both of those payback periods are the two best payback periods. They both have positive net present values. And so really our answer to both of these is the same, projects two and three. With a budget of $10 million, the company should select both project and project two and project three under the payback method. Have to, they have the fastest payback period and are below the three-year maximum. And under the net present value method, again, we should select project two and project three they both have positive net present values. So that kind of leaves us from the numbers. Okay, we've used that table, we've used it for all these answers up to this point. We do have a couple of questions left. Requirement five, define sensitivity analysis and explain how management could use sensitivity analysis in its capital budgeting process. Well, sensitivity analysis is a what-if technique to examine how results will change if the predicted financial outcomes are not achieved or if the underlying assumptions change. And so that's our definition of it. Okay? And then how we use it, management could use sensitivity in the estimate of the initial investment by assuming the project is delayed and incurs more costs or by adjusting the expectations of the amount of cash inflows. And the discount rate could also be adjusted as well as part of the sensitivity analysis to see how each of these factors impact the overall information and the overall decision that the company would be looking to make. And finally, the last requirement, the qualitative factors. What are the non-financial things 
that we can, should consider when making capital budgeting decisions? Now, again, it asks for two, so we might want to number it one, two, and we've got a list here of more than two, but there's different things to consider. The impact on the environment. An option may not have the highest return, but might benefit the environment, and if that's something that we advertise on, if that's something that's a core value for our company, then that may be a reason not to choose the project with the highest net present value, but also to take into account the environment. Additional job opportunities that may be created in the community, that may also be a reason to look at a project outside of just that pure quantitative financial calculations that we've done. And the overall growth strategy for the company might be enhanced by accepting a project that will initially generate a loss or a lower gain than the alternatives. Again, kind of that overall growth strategy. So we've got different things, impact on the community, impact on the environment, our strategy, uh, quality might be something, uh, you know, political considerations, who knows? There's a number of other things that are not financial, that are not the cash inflows and outflows that we're going to want to take into account when we make that decision. So in this question, we had a company, a certain amount of money, a few projects, nothing technically difficult here. It's just a matter of going through, understanding the payback period, what it is, understanding net present value, making the right decisions using those different methods for the company based on their budget, and then a couple of questions here at the end about sensitivity analysis and qualitative factors. So nothing difficult here. Again, as just about every other question, I, you know, I say this, it's a matter of going through step by step, answering the question they ask to the extent that they ask it. And this is a question that we should be looking at getting close to all of the potential points that are available. We should be getting those points for our exam.